So we're here with the super coach by hold cell for round 21. And it's obviously Cleary watch. How do we get Nathan Cleary into our sides? And if you're looking at my team here, it's most likely going to be Brown. It's going to be the guy that we, we do move on. And in, in obviously in my scenario, I can't move anyone. Uh, you know, could move Brown down and, and remove Galvin from the side, but Galvin's playing great. And he's average basically the same as, as Dylan. And with both teams really struggling, Galvin's actually scoring better at the moment. If you look at his sort of last five, six games, he's been great. So Brown's probably the guy that you do sell to get to Cleary. If you've got a few other options, we'll, we'll show you who you could obviously trade out in that half position as well. Moving Burton around could be cool. I don't think you'd trade Hughes to get Cleary in, in that scenario there. You'd obviously, if you do have DCE, you'd be holding on to him. Sammy Walker could be moved on to Cleary very easily. For sure. Cody Walker, would I do that? I think so. I still think that's a good enough upgrade. He's averaging 60 for the season. Yes, better in the last three, but they've also had a really nice run and it gets a little bit harder for them in this back part of the season. Obviously, than it was last, you know, in the last few weeks, they had the Tigers there. Last week there, if you can get, uh, if you can move on from Luke Brooks, I would be doing that as well, even after the 112. It's going to be a tough one for him against the Roosters. You've got Tyron Wishart that can be moved on as well. Trindle's an interesting option to bring in. He's got an 80.73 round average and their run's pretty good to finish off the year. They do have the cows this week, which will be fairly tough, but he's a, he's definitely a guy on that list. And Cleary down at 744, which is crazy. So look to try and get Nath in as quickly as you can. If you already have Nath and you're wanting a 5.8, then you can look at Burton. I think he's the clear one to, to grab in the position. A 5.68 to it's very, very cheap, which is great for you. Again, Tyrone Wishart's another one you could sell. Max Plath, I think it's, you know, I've got him in my team and he's up in the in the second row forwards and he's easily someone to move on. If you've got White and you're holding on, Dylan Walker's an interesting one as well if you want someone or need someone cheaper in the second row forward slash 5.8 position. Him at 4.69 should continue to get good minutes and if he does get the odd attacking stat like he has the last couple of weeks, then, then that'll work for you with an 84 there. But for the most part, he'll stick around that 50 mark, which again, if, you, if you've if you got someone like Plath, that's kind of where he's scoring anyway. So do you want to trade someone like Plath to, to drop down to someone like Walker to get that little bit extra cash and get a similar type of score anyway? Probably not. For those asking about Dane Laurie, I do think it's a little bit too late now. Last week was the, the week to get Dane. If you want him for a couple of weeks play, I, I do think he's only got one or two weeks remaining in that fullback slot there, unfortunately, as well. And then Jai Gray over the next couple of weeks could be sold, but he you know, gained 79K last week and averaging 66 across his last three. He's got a little bit more cash to make, even if he doesn't score incredibly well, given that uh, yeah, the week before last, he he had a big one and, and that was very helpful to him. So that's the 5-8 spot. I do think Galvin is a hold for the season. Campbell, obviously, even at 8-12, I still think is a hold for the season as well, unless something happens to him. If he cops a bit of a niggle or something like that, then he could move on for sure. Bloody Watson. Can't believe I got him last week for his 38. Gross, gross, gross. If you've got Damien Cook, hold on. Reed Marnie, 25 is pretty rough. Uh, I suppose, you know, Watson scored better than him, so I can't be too upset even with a even with a sin bin. So if you've got Appy back as well, you're holding on to him. Reese Robson, solid to have. Little, obviously, you're holding. Grant, could buy, could also just hold off, given, you know, I think he'll rest at some point in this season as well. There's no one really clearly that's standing out. Wade Egan's the cheap guy at 439. And then and Tom Starling, who we were speaking about last week, had ended up with a pretty solid score as well. To uh, And he ended up getting an update to 62 as well. So yeah, I wish I, uh, I wish I grabbed him for Braley last week instead of getting Watson. Let's just say that. Um, and saving myself some, some pain on that one, but that's okay. Can't win them all, but Starling at 379 now. It's probably a little bit too expensive and maybe you'd go for Egan now that they're a little bit closer in price, only 60K difference, so... That, uh, that hooker position, it's an interesting one. There's no one that's a clear, crazy standout. The best scorer at the moment is Cook. And yeah, he may lose minutes in the back end of the season. But right now, for right now, he's kicking goals, at least until Latrell comes back, which means he, he should be the best scorer in the hooking position going forward. And then I still think that Watson's next. And then it's obviously Harry, Reed, and Robson with Appy on the, on the back end of that. So that's the hooker position. For the front row forwards, the biggest target right now is obviously someone like Adam Fanul Blake, and then is trying to get to Payne Haas at 700k compared to that of of Barnett, who's been incredible with an 840. But you know, Payne Haas at 700k is a terrific option, even with their buy coming up. He'd be at the top of the list for the front row forwards. 
Curran, I think now with the massive minutes, he should be a really good target for you at 545. If you don't own him yet, he, he can do a great job for you. Last week would have been better at 490, but it's still okay at 4, 545. If you got Stefano, he's so cheap now at 493 and coming off a better score at 57, he's probably just a, a clear hold. A guy that's going to play the rest of the season bar round 26 and do a job for you. DeBellin comes back this week. He's fairly cheap, but uh, yeah, not someone you really want to climb into. And you've got Tavita Pango Jr. at 45. He's at 416K, so a cheaper option if you need that there as well. That's probably all the all the main options in the front row four position. And yeah, the only, the only uh, guys I wanted to speak about. So let's go second row forward. If you're looking at guys to buy, still for Fido, he's very cheap now at 723. So it's really the cheapest, I think, well, close to the cheapest you'll get him all season. He hasn't been scoring great in recent history, but he's been fine enough and doing a job. Eli Gattel is getting so cheap as well, 647. So I need a bounce back from him. That's for sure. Plath could be sold, as I said. Kaipi Sport, 469. Up to you if you've got him and Smithies. Clearly sell Smithies first. But let's have a little look at the other options there. I do really like Isaiah Yo as a cheaper option this week. If you can't get all the way to Angus or you already have Angus... I definitely think him and Fafita are the two guys to pick. I do think that, you know, Britton Nikra is the next expensive option at 730, which is crazy that Nikra is ahead of Fafita in price. So that's where Fafita is a great buy if you haven't bought yet. Angus Crichton, obviously, at 24% owned. He's awesome there for a 78 average. And then Isaiah Yale to 71 average, but price is 614. <clears throat> Coming off that rest now, he's someone to grab this week, I think, if you want, uh, yeah, someone a little bit cheaper. Britton Nikra, as I said, I'd go Yo over Watson now. Obviously, right now with the uh, with the lower score in his in his break even as well, you could get Watson cheaper after their buy. And it, all all things going well, as Yo doesn't have a rest for the rest of the season. Maybe just in game, sort of small rest in there. Ruben Cotter good doing good things, but again, I'd go Yo over him. Preston and and Curran are the two guys, as I said. Preston has some upside for sure. If he doesn't have the 80 minutes, it's a little bit annoying, but he was scoring tries at the beginning of the season in that 68, 70 minutes and doing a good job. Isaiah Papali'i is back as well, but I wouldn't jump on him. Sean Bloor after a good game. Hopefully he can continue to do well, but I wouldn't bank on it. And then Bofo Moore, I sold him a little bit, a little while ago and a good score with a try on the weekend, but don't expect a try going forward on a week, week to week basis. And Teague Wilton starting. It's pretty cool as well. So, if you need someone very, very cheap that's starting for the rest of the year in, in the 2RF, then Teague Wilton is that guy. Center wing. Center wing. So we have some some cheap fellas available, basically. We've got Casey McLean that you might want to look at. We do also have Jack Howarth, who is going to be... He's actually he's in here, isn't he? Jackie boy? No, he's still in the 2RF. Scratch that. Uh, so Howarth is the cheaper guy in the 2RF that you want to you want to grab. For the center wings, Casey McLean's the big one at 204K. Ali Leataua was the other guy last week at 238. Turns out that McLean was by far the best option, given now that uh, yeah he's got the spot sewn up, I'd say, for the rest of the year with, with Alamotti going down with his forearm injury. So he's the, the downgrade option, likely for my side, to be able to get clear in. But Lomax, he's back for the rest of the season. They have a super tough run. So I don't think against Penrith is the, the right play this week. Someone like Dom Young at 762, it's a, still a reasonable price without being ridiculous. Brian Toto has got a pretty ridiculous price there at 866, but they have a terrific run and he could be the best scorer over the part, over the last seven rounds, in my opinion. If you're comparing him to the other guys on the list, Garrick, I think he'll just outdo Garrick. They just have a really nice run. Yeah, Sarko, definitely not. Val Holmes, no, he's not playing well enough at the moment. So yeah, it's definitely going to be, I think like Toto, Hammer, Hammer's a great one at 640 if you want to jump on him. A little bit of a point of difference play. He's under 10% owned by everyone. Similar to that with Brian Toto, so he'd be a nice uh, point of difference as well. Garrick, still a really solid one to buy, but I'd probably look to do it post their, their buy next week. If you're looking at that, you've got Ronnie, fairly cheap under 500k now. Jesse Raymond's a bit expensive at 627. Would have been great a few weeks ago. Sunya. That's about it, really, in the center wing. It's a pretty interesting position. Obviously, Roger this week is a one-week play, couple-of-week play there. If you've got a lot of trades of 508K, I think he scores awesomely. At fullback this week, I was toying with that idea of grabbing him and just going for it this week is a little bit of a, you know, just push the chips in and, and see what happens this week. But I do think, you know, Cleary can can score so big this week, it'd be hard to 
to leave him out for sure. Isaac Tungo, under 400k. Just wild how that one's played out. Um, the question this week is if I do get Aitken goes to McLean, Brown goes to, to Cleary, do you play Casey McLean over over Tungo? Maybe not, but um, yeah, hopefully you can improve. Ben Trevojevic out in the centers now, not super exciting. Donson still got 74 last week, which was good. Tane Milne, look at him go up 70k last week. So good stuff on that. But yeah, there's Casey with his 52 which is cool. And then the fullback position. So Teddy and Turbo, I think is the best combination right now. So I'm very glad to be in that situation myself. But next on the list is obviously going to be Reese Walsh at 8.14. Obviously scored a great last week. His last three games is 102, the average. There's a few of them that are crushing it right now. Wow. Edwards at 80, 82 last three or 88 last five. Latrell's 114. Teddy's 99. Turbo is 112, Reese Walsh 103, Jaden Campbell 108, Hammer 80, Garrick 85. That's pretty wild from the best uh, fullbacks at the moment. Drink water at 57.7, not ideal. So yeah, he's not the one to target at the moment. You can wait for Ponga as well, post their buy, post the uh, Panthers game. There's gonna be a few options there. Reese Walsh, obviously a clear one. And this is the time to have all of the gun sort of fullbacks and center wings because games start to open up a bit points start to flow a bit more you definitely didn't see these type of averages at the beginning of the season that's for sure so have a look at that as you go across um across the next few weeks is looking to target a lot of those fullback guns and the center wings and the halves is where a lot of the the, the points in supercut come from over the next bunch of weeks so turbo obviously yeah can still be a play this week does have roosters and i think it's a tougher matchup and then after their buy he's a, he's a purchase and obviously Ponga is potentially Latrell or Dylan Edwards once they're back. And I think Hammer's a really good one, but I'd probably, you know, you have the ability to get him in the center wing. I would do that. Obviously, you can slot him there now. And then when you want to get one of those guys, Ponga, Turbo, Walsh, whoever you want to get, then you can switch him back to center wing and get one of those fullbacks. So pretty simple this week. Not a, you know, there's a, there's a decent amount of options across all the, the different price points, obviously. But only some of them, I think, are really super relevant. And if you're making trades at the moment, you're wanting to better your team for this week and have the upside for this week. That's where, you know, if you're buying Tom, if you're buying Cleary, if you're buying any of the, you know, Hammer, these types of guys, you're, you're looking for upside this week only. And, and obviously going forward, but it's, it's about fixing things up now and, and going for gold now to get the points rather than building, you know, cash generation and all that type of stuff. So keep that in mind when you're making your trades this week. That's why, you know, grab Fanul Blake. He was a cheaper guy that has upside of 100, which he got last week with a try. I thought Watson had some upside and some consistency, but apparently not this week. Um, yeah, you've got guys like Campbell, got Turbo a couple of weeks ago. Galvin even has some hundreds in him. But um, yeah, well, I thought Val Holmes had some uh, upside, but doesn't at the moment anyway. Uh, but yeah, having those guys like Asako, Plath that are just kind of plodding along at the moment aren't really cutting the mustard. They're not getting you those big scores and that's where I'm kind of hanging around my rank. So if you want to get to the next level, if you want to push up the rankings, you do need to take a few risks with some upside plays, whether that's point of difference guys under 10% like Walsh or just going for and getting a collection of those guys that are slightly higher owned but have that upside like Dom Young and these types of players. So I wish you guys all the best of luck with your trades this week and we'll catch you in the trades video for Supercoach.